The iPhone SE, being released halfway through the iPhone 6S's life cycle, is definitely one of the more weird models of iPhone. It had the extremely popular style of the iPhone 5 and 5S, but with updated internals, and because of the updated internals, hardware revisions needed to be made. Welcome to another Apple demo video, and today, we're going to be taking a look at an iPhone SE first generation prototype. The first question one may have is, where did this prototype come from? Well, unlike most times, I can actually give the specific place in which it came. eBay. Yep, I'm not joking on that one. A friend of mine managed to find this prototype iPhone SE for $35. Plus $8.40 for shipping, of course, but I digress. For a prototype of any kind, that's an absolute steal, and especially for the iPhone SE first generation, mainly because there just doesn't exist a lot of these prototype models in the wild. But anyways, let's dive in. Before we get into the software aspects of this prototype, let's dive into the physical hardware differences and stickers that this prototype has. First of all, on the outside of this prototype, we can see that there's an asset tag, the serial number, and some internal model information. So let's get to decoding what we can. After decoding the serial number, we can determine that this iPhone was made on week 50 of 2015. But wait, that doesn't seem right. The iPhone SE was released in 2016. Yup, this iPhone was actually made the previous year before it was even released. Now going to the next line, we can see that it starts with the letter D. While not immediately obvious at first, this actually stands for DVT, which is Design Validation Testing. This basically means that this prototype is kind of a halfway point prototype. Not exactly extremely early, but also not really late. The middle part of this string details a few key pieces of information about the prototype, such as that it's an iPhone SE and what specific manufacturing line it came from. And the last part of the string is the internal tracking number for this iPhone. Now taking a look at the back, it seems like everything is normal at first, until you realize that it's missing the SE badge. Upon comparing it to a retail iPhone SE, with the prototype being on the right and the retail one being on the left, you can see that it's just completely not there. More than likely, this was done to camouflage the iPhone SE, as to not elude that it's a newer model of iPhone and not just an iPhone 5S or something. Taking a look at another feature of the back, we can see that there's actually a serial number sticker of this device. And taking a look at the front, we can see that there's an engraving on the screen. And comparing it to the engraving on the side, we can see that they match, which as a reminder, this is just the internal tracking number for this iPhone. Now that we've covered the physical differences that this iPhone SE has from retail iPhones, what does it actually run? Let's take a look at the boot up process and see if we can figure it out. Upon reading the iBoot header, we can see a few key pieces of information. First of all, the internal device model number that this iBoot is running on is N69, which does correspond to the iPhone SE. We can see that this is a local boot, which means that the operating system is booting off of the NAND. We can see the board number, the revision, the build tag of iBoot, the build style of the operating system, which unfortunately in this case is release, and the CPFM, which in this case is 01, indicating that the CPU or secure enclave processor is actually developmental in nature. Now, if we navigate into settings, general, and about, we can see that this iPhone runs iOS 15.0, which is a little bit strange since the iPhone SE was supposed to release with iOS 9, but I'll get into why that is in just a few moments. Now from this point, I'm gonna let you, the viewer, play a little bit of detective work and try to determine the potential history behind this iPhone. I'll reveal what it is in the end, but just watch and try to think that to yourself. First, we're going to open some of the testing apps. Take note of the names and the icons. Now let's hop into messages.
Let's open the Mail app. Now let's see what internal testing photos there are. That's a lot of colors, but there are actual photos in here. What looks like another prototype iPhone. Now for the reveal. This iPhone appears to have been used by the US carrier T-Mobile for some internal testing. This was due to a lot of the T-Mobile branding being within this iPhone, such as within the messages or some of the mail messages being things called like T-Task. But beyond knowing that it's a T-Mobile iPhone that was used internally by T-Mobile, it seemed like it wasn't really being used for prototypey purposes, but more as just a testing phone, which is why it's not even running an actual prototype version of the iOS operating system. It's just running base iOS 15.0. But if I had to theorize, which take note, what I'm saying is just 100% theory, no fact beyond it. I would imagine that this was a prototype that T-Mobile had laying around from when the iPhone SE was the latest iPhone, but Apple may have never asked for it back which would explain why it was being tested so late after the iPhone SE was the latest iPhone, as it is running iOS 15 and not iOS 9, and why it's running a release build of the iOS operating system, and of course, as we know, it then ended up on eBay for an extremely low price, so at that point they might not have even realized that it was a prototype. But anyways, that covers pretty much what I wanted to cover about this iPhone SE prototype. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like and even consider subscribing as it really helps motivate me to continue to create more content just like this. Anyways, I'll see you all in the next video.